Hey guys, today we're going to kind of do a bit of a Bible study about relationships. So, this is an article about an atheist who is now dating a Christian. So, uh, let's just read it. Let's do it that way. Let's just read it. I gotta find it on my computer again. Hold on. Sorry. Um, hmm. All right. I'm an atheist. I have been for as long as I can remember. All my closest friends are atheists. We do atheist things like fear death and worry about the meaninglessness of life. Okay. Sounds like a great life, doesn't it? Then about a year ago, something quite unexpected happened. I fell in love with a Christian. A proper one, too. For her, God is as certain as daybreak and nightfall. Okay, there's more to being a Christian than God just being certain. Pagans are certain that there are many gods. You know what I'm saying? So, it's more than that. In the beginning, there were debates. Lots. I made the usual arguments from the atheist corner. She countered from the Christian corner. She thought I was naive. I thought she was delusional. We butted heads and it soon became boring because this was all happening the first few months of the relationship. The time when you fall madly and completely in love with someone. So, so I don't understand this. If you really thought someone was delusional, why do you want to date them or try and have children with them? You want to date and try to have children with a delusional person? That doesn't make sense. So, I mean, atheist thinking for you, though. My girlfriend's faith is an intensely personal thing. It's for her, not anyone else. So this right here, this statement right here, is not a Christian statement. Uh, it is intensely personal. That part is true. But it is for everyone. It is not just for her. So she is not living out her Christianity the way she's supposed to. Uh, I understand that this happens a lot. I understand that is what a lot of people think, but it's not how Christians are supposed to live their life. Okay, it's not. She's missing a part of it. He says, she doesn't stand in the town center with placards preaching about hell and damnation, but it is intrinsic to who she is. You don't have to stand in town center with placards preaching about hell and damnation to proselytize like we're supposed to. Okay, so this here means that he's got maybe a lukewarm Christian, or maybe a Christian who doesn't understand the Bible completely, or maybe a baby Christian or something like that. Um, maybe one who's not very mature in their faith, because basically there is, there is guidance in the Bible about who you date and marry. Okay, and people don't like this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up at the end here and show you what this is. You are not to date people who are not Christian. You are not to marry people who are not Christian. Okay. That relationship is going to be hard. And on top of that, one of two things will happen. The man, if it's a relationship like this, where the guy is the atheist, the girl is the Christian, the guy will either resent and fight back and never ever become a Christian because they can't do it, right? They don't want to. They don't see a reason to. There's nothing there for them. Or, okay, so there's three. Or the girlfriend will then become an atheist. Or the guy will say, I'll give it a try and then become Christian that way. Okay. God even gives you a pass to divorce, which is something he repeatedly says he hates. If you, if two atheists marry, one becomes a Christian and the other one doesn't want you around because you're a Christian, he says just go to preserve the peace. That's pretty intense, okay? If you understand Christianity at all and how much God talks about he hates divorce and how he doesn't want it to happen and that's not the way things are supposed to go. Okay, <clears throat> this whole relationship is wrong from a biblical Christian standpoint. Okay, 
So let's continue. Whenever I'm going through emotional turmoil, I have a tough decision sh to make. She'll say, I'll pray for you. This was infuriating at first. It was like I'd cut myself. She was saying, don't worry. I'll ask my imaginary friend to go get some plasters or band-aids. Okay, so this right here is the reaction of atheists, agnostics, anybody who doesn't believe in God. Um, because they don't understand where you're coming from. Now, in time, it says he realizes that for her, praying is the most intimate, loving gesture she can undertake. And then once he understood that, it changed the way he felt. Now, when she says she'll pray for me, I feel warm, supported, etc. But most atheists, most agnostics do not understand what you mean when you say, I'll pray for you. This right here is why God warns you, do not do this. Even if they understand, like he says now, he feels warm and supported. Mm. Just wait. It'll change. I've seen it change. So basically he's saying, I know that she is reaching out to me from the deepest part of herself with love and vulnerability. No, that's not what she's doing. And this is why it changes because they do not understand what you are doing. They cannot understand it. Okay. He says, I can appreciate that without believing in the power of prayer. Sure, you can appreciate it, but when it comes down to the hard, hard things of life, you just appreciating that I am trying to be, you know, vulnerable with you and, you know, giving you the deepest part of me is not the same as understanding what she is doing, that she is asking the creator of everything to intercede for you, to help you. This is what I mean. They don't understand. To them, it is a surface thing that go that goes no further than you. Okay. I've never read it, but I have to say the Bible is full of good stuff. I'm glad to hear that. If it's so good, maybe you should start believing it. So much fantastic life advice in that book. There isn't an inspirational meme or self-help topic that hasn't been written about and worded better in the Bible. Because the Bible contains truth and wisdom. And if it does that, then the other things must also, you must at least think that the other things might also be true. Although I don't buy into the metaphysical aspect of it all, of course not. My girlfriend has quoted passages from the good book to me that I love. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. Those passages were written by the God you're, you are rejecting. Okay. Those passages were not written by people. And this is the thing. This is the reason why these relationships usually don't work. Okay. I'm not saying 100% of the time. But I am saying that they are heartbreaking because they just... The other person... I'm speaking as a Christian when I say they... Okay, the other person does not understand what you are doing. They cannot, okay, because it is metaphysical, otherworldly, whatever you want to say, spiritual, whatever word you want to use, it is beyond just the, you know, just the flesh bag we have here. It goes so far beyond that, that the, a person who, who has rejected the idea of God and that there's something beyond themselves, so they're self-centered, cannot understand not being self-centered. Okay. <clears throat> a loving relationship is about communication. At least that's what all the books say. The trap we fall into at times is communicating the way we like to be talked to rather than the way our partner does. So here we go. Communicating the way we like to be talked to. What this eventually ends up being is stop saying you'll pray for me. Stop talking about God around me. Stop doing that because that's not how I like to be talked to. I don't believe that's true, so I don't want to talk to you about it. The Bible has outlines of how a person is supposed to live every aspect of their life. This person is not going to adhere to those because they see no reason to do so. He says, when she gets into a dilemma, let your faith guide you. It speaks to her, calms her, brings her clarity, etc. Right, because it's more than just faith, it's God, okay? She doesn't fear death. She doesn't crumble when people know she pass away. 
She cries, but she doesn't fall apart. She feels safe and secure in the knowledge that they're with God now. <coughs> Excuse me. I envy that I am a mess when it comes to death. I don't cope well. It feels so final to me. I look at her and I long for the comfort she finds in Christ. You long for that because you are made for that, sir. Every single one of us are. And that is where we find peace, harmony. That's where we become... I don't really know how to put this other than to say that's where we become the best us we can possibly be. Because we come in line with how reality is. Not what we think, not what science is telling us, not what other people think, how it is. Okay? The truth is, I don't know who she'd be without her faith. Exactly. Because faith changes you. I am a different person from the person I was before. The person I was before was very sort of not a good person. It informs everything she does. It's in every aspect of her being. Exactly. It informs everything she does. So down to every single relationship she has, including yours. I sincerely hope this goes on to talk about having kids and all that stuff. And how the atheist is just not sure he's comfortable teaching the kids to pray. This is why God tells you not to do this. Here it is right here. There are undoubtedly difficult conversations still to come. Should we have children, for example? I'm not sure how I feel watching her teaching them to pray. But I'm sure we'll be fine. As long as we do Ephesians 4.2, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. So this is the duality, number one, of the atheist agnostic mindset. We'll be fine as long as we follow the Bible, but I refuse to believe the Bible or let you teach, or I'm not sure I want you to teach people how to pray or have anything else with the Bible. This is why it doesn't work, right? They don't understand life. They don't understand the world. They do not get it. And they never will until they bow the knee to Jesus. And that's just how it is. I understand some relationships do end up working. That's like a 0.05% of the time. Most of the time it ends up in heartbreak. And that's what I've seen. It's usually heartbreak. It is not, oh, we got along and all this stuff. It's heartbreak. If you have children, confused children, things like that. All right. So let's let, go ahead and look up this Bible verse I said was here. Because again, you know, I'm trying to <laughs> do better with that. The Bible equally yoked. So anything I say, you can just type in the Bible and, and usually, and then whatever else it was I was talking about, it should just pop up. Okay. Bible verses about being equally yoked. Second Corinthians six. Here's the longer version, 14 through 18. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness. What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has a temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them, and I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Therefore go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me says the Lord Almighty. All right. This is specifically talking about marriage and how we're not supposed to be doing those type of things. We, a Christian, believes that God lives inside them once they accept Jesus Christ. That we have a portion of God, I should say, the Holy Spirit that lives inside them to guide us, teach us, direct us in like to guide us in daily life, to teach us the Bible, and direct us who to be with. Okay? God will not direct you to be with someone who's not saved. Let me see if I can show you the rest of it. Oh, that, that's the whole thing. Okay. Sorry, I'm just reading that so I can see if it's anything. 
But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech, the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true. That's going to happen in that relationship. Guarantee it if it hasn't already. And it kind of already has. Okay. A unsaved person will not understand why you will put up with these obstacles. Why you will go and be part of riots. Why will you have sleepless nights for the world. Why you care about whether or not somebody else is hungry. They just are missing a piece. And you can tell by the way they deal with life. So anyway, that's why I wanted to do that. I wanted to show you guys that so that you know that I'm not just, you know, whistling Dixie or whatever. Um, thanks for joining me in this one, guys. This is a just a, a very mini sort of Bible study about why.